Hello there, I'm Strata, and this is going to be a tutorial for both newer players to get familiar with the concept, and for more experienced ones to maybe learn something new. I'll quickly go over basics, and then we'll focus on popular maps for group play in pre-rebirth content. Many characters in Ragnarok have strong AoE damage skills. Therefore, whenever you can get a bunch of monsters together and kill them all at the same time, it's more efficient than killing them one by one. But it's risky, since one mistake and you can die almost instantly. For me, mobbing is the most fun and challenging aspect of this game. A good place to practice is Orc Dungeon 2. Try to pull all Orc Skeletons on the map without getting hit by them, to get more precise and consistent with your movement. Add Zen Orcs into the mix to simulate a common problem of mobbing monsters that have different movement speed. At that point, your movement pattern is gonna get more wavy, as you need to stay out of reach of faster ones while keeping slower ones interested. Potter's map is likely to be the first place where you will be mobbing for a party. And boy is it a great place to start off. Aggressive monsters are slow, move at the same speed, will not attack you from range unless you attack them. So literally anyone can do a fine job on this map. When your mob looks crispy enough to be presented to the public, it's time to deliver it to your party. Remember that you are in control here. Your mob should go only where you tell it to go. So when approaching the party, always be ready to turn back. Maybe your tank is not there. Maybe your tank is not ready. Maybe they're still killing previous mob. Maybe your party is a graveyard. Once everything looks nice and wet, it's time to go in and unload on your tank. If you haven't done anything to make monsters pissy about you specifically, like every second or so, they will scan their aggro radius for a closest target to attack. So literally all you need to do is line them up and casually walk through your tank. Would you look at that? Don't wipe your party just because you weren't paying attention. And get real comfortable at bringing these cute, cuddly little furries with rubbery tails to the slaughter to be recycled into experience, and your team will be happy. Niflheim poses a greater challenge, as not only there's more monsters on the map, they move faster and at different speed, but also the map is not as open, with lots of choke points, tight corridors, misleading visuals? Look at this shit! You think you can pass around that tree? Think again! Parties usually position in the middle, and have at least two mobbers pulling for them, one from top side, one from bottom side. The top route, that I like to start from Central Graveyard and then sweep the rest, is the harder one. Once you got everyone in the middle, coming up is the worst part of the map. A narrow bridge into a tight mini graveyard that ends with a choke point. If you have any gibbets following you, not losing them on the bridge is gonna be a pain. Expect to take some damage. Once you get out of this gate, the rest of the way is gonna be much easier. Bottom route is much more straightforward. You start from graveyard at bottom right and make your way back to the middle. The only part worth to note is this little piece of shit area that people usually discover by accident. Commonly known as Pumpkin Farm, this is essentially a long, narrow corridor that ends with a dead end. If you ignore this area for too long, it may get crowded. And when it's crowded, it is a bitch to pull stuff out of there. You have no space for maneuver, so you're gonna get punched all the way through. 
few quick tips about monsters, dual hands and disguises have an attack range of two cells instead of one, so you need to keep extra distance. Gibbets are the second highest experience monsters on the map, their attacks can curse you and they move slower than others, so your main concern is gonna be to not let them fall behind. If you are solo mobbing this map, for example with a wizard, there's two more things you need to remember. First, when Gibbets get attacked, they start using a ranged attack Grimtooth. It'll deal damage and make it harder to move, so have a few healing items to counteract that. Second thing is, when Hilidzoists get attacked, they start using Body Relocation to close the gap quickly. And if a bunch of them times it just right when you stop to do a cast, this will happen. Magma Dungeon 2, huh? High experience and valuable drops definitely come with a price. This map is gasoline-soaked diarrhea to mob. Not only the map is littered with these disgustingly thin bridges, but also monsters will make your life hell by spamming you with fire magic. Blazer and Sky the Leader have Fireball. It doesn't care about Priest's Kyrie or Flea. So the classes I'd suggest for this place are the Proud Members of the Cavalry Crusader and the Knight Not only their Peko is bloody fantastic, but they also have the Endure skill that allows them to not get staggered by magic. Earth Deleter puts down Firewall, which shouldn't hit you as long as you keep moving. Where it does become dangerous is on the bridges, because you pretty much have to stutter step while crossing one to keep monsters chasing you. And if one of these dildo heads puts it on top of you the moment you stand still, you'll get completely cut off. At this point, just say GG and fly wing away. Diabolics cast Meteor Storm, which is easy to avoid. The problem is that they stand still while casting, so if you don't zip back and grab their attention again, they'll just stop chasing. Oh, and if that sneaky little shit starts casting as you start crossing a bridge, he is gone. It's not like you can just turn back and pick him up. Just move on. By the way, if you haven't noticed by now, half of the monsters on this map have the fatigue mechanic. Don't we all love this one? This is when they do a sweat emote and are like, nope. Gravity clearly made it to discourage mobbing. And the randomness of this thing sucks. Not even damaging them can prevent that. That is some short memory. You might be in the process of killing a pack when suddenly one goes, the hell is even going on? So yeah, that will happen. When you get more comfortable with the dance, you can taunt some of them back if you want. Terrors are your best friends here. They don't spam you with magic, don't pussy out of a chase, and they give the highest experience on the map. Such bros! So the more horse bros you can get in your mob, the better. At the time this video was made, Jupiter's Dungeon was the latest piece of content released on our server. And in terms of experience, it has the highest potential out of all places we have covered. But this place is evil, because the way it does that is by having an insane density of monsters. Otters had like 40 of them on the entire beach. This first floor has a total of 260 Venatus running around and each of them hits about twice as hard as a single otter. When it comes to mobbing this Skynet den, even though a Crusader can pull impressive amount of these tin cans just through sheer tankiness, sustain and the endure skill, you are in for a lot of pain. Even your Pekka will start whining that he didn't sign up for this shit. So the undisputed king of mobbing this map is the Assassin. Just get to around 260 fleet, equip two fortune swords and you'll get nearly untouchable.
On top of that, you have cloaking to not only bullshit your way out of any sticky situation, you can also use it to split your mob into smaller chunks, for example if your tank is not very geared. Speaking of tanks, if your party has one, Raedric and Penamena card are almost necessary if you want to survive a big pull. Or you can go without a tank and set up a grinder with Quagmire and AoE spells. This top right sector seems to be a nice place to park your team. Pulling routes will be more or less of the same length, plus there's some nice environment you can take advantage of. This left spot has a little pocket where your casters can hide. They can even wall off themselves from danger if they want, while pushing monsters with storm gust against this north wall. Spot on the right is pretty much the same but reversed. And finally this bottom spot is probably my favorite. This northwest building is a nice natural cover, plus there is a convenient path for pullers to dump their mobs. They can approach from north like that, and then escape through this handy path under the tree. That's about it for now. Thanks to Origins Row team for maintaining an awesome low rates classic server. And sorry to all my teammates who may or may not have died because of me. We all walk the same path of experience, taking baby steps towards that shiny level 99. All I'm trying to do is give us a little kick in the ass. It'll make us go faster, but it might hurt a little bit.